Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the BlackBrazilToday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So today I'm going to uh, approach a topic that uh, you know I've been taking a lot of interest in, particularly over the last six months or so. I mean, it's it's always been there, you know, in the background. But, you know, with all of the dialogue that's going on online nowadays, it's, it's, you know, it's a topic that I've been wanting to explore a little bit more. So I've done a couple of introductory introductory pieces, uh, you know, over the last couple of months. And, you know, I'm going to start getting more into this as time goes on. So, uh, you know, feel free to chime in. You know, uh, I definitely want to know what you think about some of this material that I'm presenting, whether you are on one side of the fence or the other side. Let's just have a conversation, right? So today's piece is called Black Men and Women Are Closer to Feminism Than White People in Brazil, According to a, a, a Recent Survey. So no further ado, let's just jump right into this piece. This is, uh, it looks like a group of women at a, a rally, probably in Sao Paulo in Brazil, uh, where I lived for about nine years. Saw a lot of rallies while I was there. Anyway, so as I've been saying for a few weeks now, the question of feminism in Brazil is a topic I've been wanting to dive into for a minute, and I have good reason. For those of you who have followed me over to YouTube and followed my blog up to about three years ago, you know that the original name of the blog was Black Women of Brazil. Today, the blog, as well as this YouTube channel, is called Black Brazil Today, and there are numerous reasons of which I felt the need to change the name. The first reason was because so many people on online thought that Black Women of Brazil, the blog, was actually run by a group of Black women from Brazil, which it never was. One thing I've known for some time is that no matter the topic, even if you're on the same side as your colleagues in the struggle, you're not going to agree on everything. And one of the many topics that demonstrated this was the docu-series uh, entitled Surviving R. Kelly. I think it came out in 2019. Anyone who knows my opinion on that whole topic in the documentary know that I have never condoned R. Kelly's behavior with underage girls. In fact, I regularly, regularly maintain that if Kelly, in fact, committed the crimes he was committed, he was accused of, he should do the time. But what I also pointed out along the way was that there were several uh, uncomfortable details about that whole scandal that no one seemed to want to acknowledge. Because I pointed these things out, people regularly accuse me of defending R. Kelly, which I never did. At that point, I had already been considering changing the name of the blog, and after all of the accusations being hurled my way, I decided it was time to make the change. Even though there was a page on my blog that clearly showed who I was, I understood that because of the name, people continued to believe that the material on the blog was posted by a group of Black Brazilian women, and thus may have believed that I spoke for Black women of Brazil in relation to the R. Kelly situation. Again, I never did that, and even if I were, the situation proved that many movements don't allow other points of view that may go against the narrative of that particular movement. Anyway, somewhere along the way, I've been, I began to question some of the goals of Brazil's feminist movement and specifically the black feminist movement when I began to participate in a few black Brazilian men's uh, social network groups, as well as following online magazine by a group of Afro-Brazilian men and women who took issue with many aspects of the feminist movement. Along with my own political development over the past few decades, I've come to believe that when there is big money behind leftist movements, they usually don't have the best interests on issues affecting the black community. Several examples of this. Of course, I could be wrong, but as I always ask those who reject anything I say, what if I'm right? In my own analysis of numerous leftist movements involving the black community, I've come to discover that in many ways, our people and community were and continue to be exploited, manipulated, and used for a larger agenda that had nothing to do with advancing the condition of the black community. To this end, I've had to analyze movements for civil and black rights 
including the U.S. Civil Rights Movement, the Black Panthers, organizations such as the NAACP and the Urban League, as well as a recent example in Black Lives Matter, which has also taken hold in Brazil, as well as an exact translation of the phrase in Portuguese, vidas negras importam. My conclusion is that these movements were not what they were reported to be. Thus, as funding and support of many women's groups also come from some of the same social engineers, feminism must also be analyzed under this microscope. For years, many activists have questioned the influence of the feminist movement and its effect on the black community. With the rise of black feminism in Brazil, I've wondered what the effect would be on in I, I wonder what the effect would be on Brazil. So in an ongoing analysis, I wanted to consider what was going on with black feminism in Brazil. Furthermore, I need to point out that social movements don't always have 100 percent support of the groups in which they claim to represent because people have various opinions on whatever issue it might be. So just as all black people didn't support the civil rights movement of the 1960s, all members of the LGBT community don't support that movement and everyone clearly didn't support and doesn't, everyone clearly didn't or doesn't uh, support Black Lives Matter. I'm speaking on the movement, not the phrase. And this applies also to the fact that many women also don't support feminism. Now, whether you say that people who have views outside the narrative of these particular social movements are the minority or the majority, you cannot dismiss the opinion of people when they go outside of the narrative that's being pushed by that particular social movement. That's what I was just alluding to. Um, I noticed that just about in every social movement you can think of, uh, people are going to be divided. Even if you have a majority on one side that believes one way, there's still going to be people that think on the opposite side of the fence. You know, you can look about just about any social movement you can think of, and you're going to find people who are divided on certain issues of these movements uh, for whatever rights they might represent for whatever population they're representing. People are not going to agree 100 percent on every topic. And we have to we have to respect those opinions, because what happens if um, the people who you think you are against actually what if they're right? What if you're wrong? That's something that I've had to consider over the years, and I've had to change my position on a number of topics, but that's only because I'm willing to listen to what the other side has to say. In fact, if you search online, you will find many women who were once feminists but have since left the movement. This applies to Brazil. A quick search on YouTube and you will find Brazilian women making videos entitled, uh, Por que no sou feminista? Why I'm not a feminist? Uh, ex-feminista explica porque abandonó el feminismo. Ex-feminist explains why she abandoned feminism. El mundo no precisa del feminismo. Does the world not need feminism? Porque el feminismo no me representa. Why doesn't feminism represent me? You can find these videos and just many more all over the internet, whether you're searching in English or Portuguese you're going to find women who are both sides of this fence. There are those who are strongly in support of the movement, others who are strongly against it, some who have entered the movement and left it for various reasons. You know, all of these voices need to be respected because we're not going to agree on everything. Now, some might argue those women are a minority, and that may or may not be true. Of course, a previous study reported that 51% of Brazilian women define themselves as feminists, but this survey didn't actually interview every woman in Brazil, but rather a very small number of women who or when considering there are tens of millions of women in a country with 10, uh, 215 million people, this doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. But even if non-feminists are actually the minority in Brazil, these voices must all be heard because we all have the right to our opinions and the right to change our minds without the threat of shaming, violence, or cancellation. For years, when I considered myself a leftist, there were certain points that Black conservatives would occasionally make that I simply couldn't dismiss because I knew deep down that sometimes they were right. This is the same way I approached the issue of feminism. So to introduce the topic, I wanted to continue to report on the growth of feminism in Brazil, as I did with a previous report that showed that feminism in Brazil grew from 39% of Brazilian women identifying themselves as such in 2019 to 51% in 2022, with a large parcel of that support coming from the Black community. Consider the, the report below, courtesy of Genido e Numido, which means gender and number. 
As the piece below is courtesy of Genedo and Numero, I need to point out that the piece does not represent my own views, but it's simply a report that shows the growth of feminism within Brazil's black community. With that said, let's check it out. Yeah, you see this woman at a rally. It says, so leave it on her back, uh, which means I'm free. You translate Portuguese to English. So again, the, the title of this piece is Black Men and Women Are Closer to Feminism Than White People in Brazil, according to a survey. 